the Lord builds my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and staff that cometh me. Thou preparest a table before me in the of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. First thing I want to say, praise God. He's worthy to be praised. The order of service is Reverend William Barnes, myself, and the ones that came out on this day to be with the family. We want to say thank you. The clergy and family, our heart is with you. And our prayers will be going out for you and your family. The, the person of service, a selection of New Hope Church, Scripture, the Old Testament, Reverend Emmanuel Brown, the New Testament, Reverend Greg Ford, prayer, Minister Gwen Decker, Selection, New Hope Baptist Church, The Revolution, New Hope Baptist Church, Family Tribute, Grandchildren and Great Grand. The remarks, please hold your remarks to two minutes for the family. Acknowledgements. Abbe Ann Richardson, presentation, Victory Funeral Home and Staff. Soloist, Solo, Minister Gwen Decker. And a word of comfort, our very own Reverend Keith Battle. The service will go as follows. God bless you, God keep you, and God also loves you.
Good afternoon. May the words that will be spoken and read today bring comfort to the family in this time. Our Old Testament reading will be coming from the 91st number of Psalms. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse 14, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of God. May it be a blessing to those who read, receive, and respond to it accordingly. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I will bring to you the scripture from the New Testament, and I will commence at verse 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's listen and see what the word of God says. But I will not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with a voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in a cloud to meet the Lord in the air. This is my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. And so shall we ever be. Yeah. And so shall we ever be yeah. with the Lord. Yes, sir. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. May the uh, Lord add a blessing to the readers, doers, but also the ones who adhere to his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Shall we pray? Father God, we come to you this morning. We come as humble as we know how. Lord, we come thanking you for this day that you made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, our Savior. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, our keeper. We thank you, God, that you are just too wise to make a mistake. And, Lord, that you have not and you will not allow anything to come upon us that we cannot bear. So, God, we just want to say thank you. We're not complaining about anything. We just want to say thank you. For you are God, and beside you, there is none other. We thank you for this chance and opportunity that you've allowed us to come together this evening, God. God, to give you praise, give you the glory, and give you the honor. Lord, we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So in the midst of what we are going through right now, we still praise you. We still give you glory, and we still give you honor. We still say that you are God, and beside you, there is none other. We thank you, God, for just being in this place, God. We thank you for your anointing right now, destroying yokes. We thank you right now for giving peace in the midst of this storm, God. We thank you for restoring in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the family of heart is comfort even right now, God. That they know that you are God and they trust you with their whole heart. God, we thank you that you said in all our ways, and we just acknowledge you, yeah. that you are direct us. Yes. So we acknowledge that you are God. Yes. We thank you that you are our Savior. We thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost 
most high king. Lord, we praise you right now. Oh God, we thank you for the family, God. God, we thank you for strengthening them right now where they might be weak. And we thank you that you build them up when they was torn down. Yes. That their hearts is encouraged. Yes. Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless them. Bless them that they will continue to lift to the hills for which they have come from. Realizing that all of their help, it comes from you. And God, we give you praises. We give you the glory. And we give you the honor. And again, we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of y'all might see this thing a little strange here, but, but this is a celebration. And, and Sister Williams requested this song because she wants the family to celebrate. Because see, Sister Abby has already lived her life. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. But see, now you that's here today, the family, I'm here to encourage you. That you've got to live your life and you've got to live it for the Lord. My soul, God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm saying all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I will turn back. This means, this means. This means I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm saying all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means This means This means I bleed the blood There's power in the blood No battles going on, my war clothes are on. I might be in the days, but you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means This means This means This means this is what I need to feel. This is what I need to do right now. You can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't. You can't. You can't have me. This means This means This means This means Let's go tell that devil one more time Because you got to get up out of here today You can't have my family You can't have my increase Yeah! <laughs> 
with me. Resolution of Respect for Sister Ernestine Bradley Abbott. We are in, in place in this world for a limited time, and with the breath of the infant begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run, whereas in the providence of God he has brought to a close the life of Sister Ernestine Abbott. The officers and members of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family during this passing of Sister Abbott. We commend to you, we commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. To you, James, Linda, and the family of Sister Abbott, we the members of New Hope Baptist Church want you to know how deeply saddened we are for your loss. We the members of New Hope are praying with you and for you, and will continue to minister long after the services are over. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrow to you, hug your sorrow to you through the ears, but start out bravely with a gallant smile and for my sake and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and in cheer, and in turn will I comfort you and hold you near. And never, never be afraid to die, for I'm waiting for you in the sky. Author unknown. Humbly submitted, Reverend Keith Battles, Pastor, Reverend William Barnes, Associate Minister, Sister Yvette Barnes, Church Secretary. loss of a loved one. Life is a journey of sweetness and sorrow, of yesterday's memories and hope for tomorrow, of pathways we choose and detours we face with patience, humor, courage, and grace, of joy that we shared and of people we meet who have touched us in ways that we will never forget. With love, your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. That I love all of my aunts and uncles, and there were a lot of them. But a sister was my favorite. We don't always remember everything that was said to us, everything that someone has said to us, but we always remember how somebody made you feel. And, and 
sister, and I can tell by the people that are here, always made you feel good. Whenever you saw her, she always had that beautiful smile. And she not only smiled with her face, but with her heart. And she always had a twinkle in her eye. As the Bible says, turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. She personified that. She had a tender heart. She didn't hold a grudge. And she was always giving. I loved to go to Aunt Sister's house when I was little. It was always immaculate for one thing. And always smelled good. I had tomboyish ways, but I was always a girly girl. And Aunt Sister was a girly girl's girl. She had lace slips and dotties on her dresser. And made you feel good. You were always happy around that sister because she had that twinkle. She was tender hearted and she would cry easily. And as a young girl, you never know what makes older people cry. But she didn't cry long and she always had that bounce back smile. She loved family. She loved her son. I would go down in the summer and me and Junior would run and play and run and play. And I don't ever remember being scolded by a sister. And I know we deserved it. I know we needed it. We needed it. And we caught it from all of my other aunts. But I don't remember catching it from a sister. Maybe we didn't have to act up around her. And she could cook. And she would cook whatever you wanted. I remember the first time I met Junior's children, Tracy and Shita. I called her little Bobby, a little chocolate baby with hair down her back and spunky as you could be. And you know how kids like fast food? Not little Bobby, not she. She said, Mama, I want some chicken. <laughs> this little country girl came to Kansas City. She wants some chicken. So her sister said, okay, baby, we'll go buy you some chicken. She said, little thing. She said, I don't want no chicken, Bob.
ministers on the roster to the family. First, I just want to just thank God for being here. Um, I remember our sister uh, so many times uh, having me taking her to the store. And she started out saying, I'll give you $10. And by the time we make it to Kilgore, it got down to $3. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Another seven. But you know her sister. And uh, of course she bought me a two piece and everything. I forgot about the seven dollars. <laughs> uh, I uh, I just thank God for her. And uh, I'm the one of the family that I try to keep everybody laughing and sometimes I have to pat myself to you know, keep my own smile on my face, but I know a man that never leave us and never forsake us. So I knew Jesus and she she told me, she said, Kimmy, you, you got it, you got it, you you got it, you gotta keep on and sometimes I wanted to give up, y'all, but I realized my sister said, Keep on. I have to press toward that mark. So that's you know, that's what it's in me to do. And uh I phone pranked her one night and uh, I called and I said she said, hello, and uh, she always kept a praise, so I'm like, okay. So I said, this is the 700 Club, and I come, I call to pray for you, and she was like, yeah, y'all got my information, I send money to y'all, yeah, 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 I knew y'all was going to come. And I'm like, oh, man, I done stepped in there, so, so uh, I said, can I pray for you, and it started out as a joke. I was like, sure, the season, you know, when I jumped up the third time. <laughs> something got a hold of me, y'all. So we started praying for real, and God really moved, so uh, I ain't going to do that one no more. I ain't going to phone prank nobody on, on praying no more. And uh, I visited at the nursing home, and uh, she, I bought her, you know, everything she said, Brian, about broke, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, I bought her what she wanted, the snacks and everything else. And she said, she looked at me, she said, Kimmy, you forgot some. I said, oh, I kind of forgot and I only had about five or six dollars. <laughs> she said, you forgot some. I was like, what did I forget? She said, you didn't, you didn't bring me my man. Lord, <laughs> hell, uh, I need that myself. <laughs> I need to bring that myself. I'm looking for him myself. <laughs> but uh, I was like, oh, we're going to have to pray about that one. And uh, he's going to have to find us just like the Bible. Really. <laughs> so uh, I was like, okay, maybe next time. But she always kept you laughing. And uh, she always kept uh, me laughing. I just call and just talk to her, just hear her talk, you know. And I just thank God for the family, Teresa and Sheikha. We, Grew up together, and that's all she talked about was y'all. And uh, she talked about me too. <laughs> but she always talked about them. And uh, family, let's stay close, but keep the Almighty God closer. School, CB Dansby High School 
uh, Elder Elementary Association, and we want uh, Squaw to know who we love him, and uh, we just want to expedite time and not read that one. But I stand before you today on behalf of me and my staff at Victory Funeral Services, and I want to say to you, Squaw, Lambda, and family, we hope something we've done this week that has lightened your load, that we've helped you in some way to make this an easier occasion. We know it's hard, but we want you to know that our services don't stop today. So if there's anything we can do for you in the, in the immediate future, let us know. And also know, be assured that the scriptures say to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Amen. So you have that in knowing that she's present with the Lord. Thank you. Family of Sister Ernestine Abbott wishes to express their deepest appreciation and gratitude to the loved ones and friends for their kindness and support. Your telephone calls, flower cards, food, visits, and prayers were comforting to our hearts. A special thank you to the Good Shepherd Medical Center and Heritage of Wongi. May God bless you and keep each of you in his tender loving care.
tell you now, we come to celebrate the Lord. Yeah. See, now see, I, I didn't know Sister Abby. And she's gone on the glory. But I can talk to you. 
and make sure that you have your business straight with the Lord. Because the Bible lets us know that you don't know the minute or the hour when Jesus Christ is coming back. And your mind can't even wrap around because watch this, because when you think about it, Jesus is still God, but he still doesn't even know when he comes back. Only God the Father himself knows. See, think about that when you get to the house. You better get it ready, get ready, get ready, because he is soon to come back. You can't even explain how in February how your grass is still green. Some of y'all missed that. Jesus is coming back soon. And I'll tell you, don't play a Russian roulette with your life. But get your business straight with the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. We won't be before you long. Let's, let's, let's see the inspiring word. We praise God for this opportunity. And I thank all these men of God that's behind me and the minister Decker that's in the pew. God bless all of you. And don't you know, there's, 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 when you got all this power behind you, out in front of you, it makes it easier for the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. To say what he needs to say. Real briefly, real briefly. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're just going to look at one verse for a few minutes. Reading from the King James Version. Paul writes this. He said, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with, with hands eternal in the heavens. Let's talk about it for a few minutes, a home that money came by. Yeah, yeah, see, a, a home that money came by. See, we, we, we're here to have a celebration. Oh, come on, somebody. And, and, and when we look at this thing, when we look at this thing, a lot of us in here, let me, let me break it down to you. No matter your prestige, no matter your money, no matter your bank account, it's not even your name that's going to get you to heaven. Or you miss me. But it's that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior is the only way that you can get this home. Oh, come on, somebody. Because see, 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 how many homeowners we got out there? See, when you, when you, when you want to buy your home and you fill out all this long paperwork and you feel like you signed your life away, see, but you, you had to make notes on that. Oh, come on, somebody. But with but, but this home, Jesus holds the lease. Jesus holds the title deed. And your money or not in your name or nothing you can do can get this home. The only thing you can do is accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior in order to get this home. See, your money can't buy this home. Oh, come on, somebody. Because, see, see, right here, while we're here, temporary right now, this, this, this is only temporary. Look, look at the text. Look at the text. First thing Paul said, he said, for we know. That means there has to be in our spiritual awareness. What, what, what do you mean, preacher? Well, first of all, first of all, you got to know who God is. And you got to have your own relationship with God. Because God does not have any grandchildren. He does not have any nieces, aunts, uncles, nephews. Oh, come on, somebody. All God has is children. And the only way you're going to become a child of God is accept Jesus and confess him as your Lord and make him your Savior. You miss me. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, 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 watch this. But somebody might say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, we, we, we all, we all, God created all of us. Yeah, but let me tell you something. The Bible doesn't know that you were born and shaping in iniquity. Come on, somebody. And the only way that you can be saved is through Jesus Christ himself. Because he lets you know that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. Come on, somebody. The only way to get to the Father is what? By him. Come on, somebody. So he said, for we know. So there has to be a knowledge. And let me let me help you today. And see, once you learn and you and you and you learn more about Jesus and you get into the family of God, watch this. He said, then you know that your redeemer lives. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't you know that Jesus Christ is the only one that can redeem you? Nothing that you can do in yourself, but he's the only one that can reconcile you back to God. Come on, somebody. He was our provision in between us and God. Because sin had already separated us, and the only way that we can have our relationship back to the Father was through Jesus Christ. And once you know this and you put this in your spirit, come on, somebody, then you can say, I know that my Redeemer lives. 
For we know, know that Christ is the Savior of the world. Could you save yourself? No. Oh, come on, somebody. Well, is it found in Buddha, Muhammad? No. My Bible lets me know the only way to cry, only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. Come on, somebody. So if you know, first of all, you know that your Redeemer lives, and you know that Christ is the Savior of the world. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. For we know. Know in whom you believe in. Do you believe in Jesus Christ today? But if you believe in, don't you know he's able? Oh, come on, somebody. He, he's able that which he have committed unto him. Oh, come on, somebody. See, once you commit yourself to the Lord and you told God that he's your owner and your boss, then you have their assurance of your salvation. Somebody here ought to know that God is able. It is only God that can save you. It is only God that can give you the peace in the middle of the world. Come on, family. It is only God that can speak peace in the midst of the storm. And God don't even have to show up. All he got to do is just speak it. Oh, I need some believers in the house today that you know that you know that you know that God is able. That at the time when you was down to your lowest point, that it was God that just stepped in and just picked you up right on time. That's what I mean when God is saved. It has nothing to do with your house. It has nothing to do with your car. When you want to know when God is able, is when you turn around and you're trying to catch your friends and your family, and they got their own problems, and when you call, you can't catch them. But I know somebody that you can call on in the midnight hour. And his mind is never missing. And when you call him and you have a little talk with him in the midnight hour, he won't go tell your business all over the place. Oh, come on, son. Somebody in the house, you got to know that God is here. Oh, help me. But for we know, for we know. Now, 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 I'm talking to the believers now. For the, for the believers, you ought to know something. Oh, come on, son. Oh, come on, come on. Now, 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 watch this, watch this. Now, when you know that you know that you know, oh, come on, somebody. You know that when he appears, <laughs> we should be like him. Oh, see, see, I like when somebody said you look like your daddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're a friend. I told you how to do friend is okay, but I'm glad they said I look like my father. Because my father is in heaven. See, my daddy got me my mama. That's just my dad. But I'm talking about my father. When they say you look like your daddy, I'm talking about that daddy. So you want to say, we should see him as he is. Oh, come on, somebody. We should be like him, and we should see him as he is. That means the only way you're going to see God for who he is is you got to make your home. Money can't buy that money. So, for, for we know, for we know, for we know. Now, 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 now watch this. This, this. this is the part sometimes we have trouble with because we, when things are going good, we want to praise the Lord. But then when things begin to get a little sad in our life, just every once in a while, we, 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 we hold our head down and we say, God, why me? Well, let me help you out. But, but if you know that you know that you know, for we know that all things work together for good. Yeah, yeah, but there's a clause in there. There's a clause in there to them that love God. Not love your money. Not love your house and your job. It ain't even about loving your spouse. But it's about loving God. Because you got to put God first in everything that you do. Oh, we just celebrating today. That's just me. I'm just being me. So you got to know that all those things that what you're going through, family. You can't see it right now. But it's working good for the God of the Lord. So you know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And to them, oh, come on here, help me, help me, help me, preacher, that are called to his purpose. See, it ain't about your purpose and plan, but it's about the will of God. Come on, somebody. The second thing, we won't be for you long, the second thing is, the second thing is, there has to be a spiritual understanding. Look at the text. He said, for if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved. See, see, Paul was a tent maker. Come on, somebody. And this earthly house he referred it to is this tent. This temporary tent that we're in right now. Don't you know that this body's only temporary? That you only borrowed it for a few years? Oh, come on, somebody. Because see, a tent doesn't even have a foundation. And if you, if you go, where my camp was at, if you go camping, and if you don't pin it down, a strong wind come through. Come on, somebody. It'll blow away. But see, if you root yourself in the word of God, then why you in this tent, Satan can't blow you away. Yeah, yeah, I need somebody to know this. Say, say, look at the name of time. This is just temporary. Now, I, mean, I, mean, I just don't borrow time right now. This, this, this is just temporary. This is the earthly house that I'm in. This is the earthly house that the Lord allowed me to be in right now. But it's only temporary. 
So, so earthly house, he said, this is a temporary dwelling place. This is your mortal body. But when you look at the text of the Father, he said, this tabernacle. When you look at the Old Testament, don't you know the tabernacle was the dwelling place of God? So let me ask you this. Is your tabernacle clean today? Do you have God dwelling in your heart? Do you think about God when he first woke you up in the morning? Did you tell him thank you? Did you say thank you, Lord? Because I could have been dead and gone. But because you're dwelling in this tabernacle, I got in your sense that when I wake up in the morning, real, I tell him thank you. And then if the day still going bad, I still tell him thank you. If I got more bills than money, I still tell him thank you. Oh, come on, somebody. If there's no food in the cupboard, I still tell him thank you. So you got to have God dwelling inside of you. Oh, come on, somebody. Watch this. Ephesians 3 and 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you bring rooted and grounded in love. Notice what he said. Notice what he said. In your hearts. Don't you know your hearts? We're talking about your mind and your will and your emotions towards God. That means your whole mindset needs to be changed. You need to turn away from sin and turn to God. That means your whole being, you start putting God first in everything that you do. That's what it means by having God dwelling in your hearts. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Then look at the text. He said dissolve, which means disintegrate. That means mortality. That means death. Don't you know this old tabernacle when it goes to the grave? But I got good news for you. But see, if you're a believer, come on, somebody. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. And then the spirit and the soul go home and be with the Lord. Oh, you got you. You better hear what I'm telling you today. You see, it does just say, but if you're a believer, oh, help me, Minister David. You got to be a believer. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't you know we made it three parts? Huh? Body, soul, and spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Just like God is three part. Come on, God the Father. Oh, come on, Jesus the Son and the Holy Ghost. And if you notice, go back in Genesis that God said, let us make man in our image. Oh, come on, somebody. So if you are like God, you ought to have God dwelling in. won't last always. But your spirit and soul can last forever with the Lord. Well, come on, somebody. Because we realize that it's appointed once for man to die. Oh, we finishing this thing. We, we, we get ready to let you go. We get ready to let you go. The last thing, the last thing, a spiritual resting place. Look at the text. He says we have a building of God. Don't you know what that means? That we have a heavenly building from God? We have a permanent house in heaven. Oh, come on, somebody. We possess a building which God has provided, and it awaits for the believer. But notice what it said. It says the believer. Because when we look at when we look at John chapter 14, a part of the verse says, oh, come on, somebody, in my father's house are many mansions. Now, 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 I don't know about you, but, this, but the little dwelling place that you got here on earth, there's no comparison that when you get home, the glory with the be with the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. And then it says, and house not made with hands. Don't you know when, 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 when man builds your house, he can make a mistake? But I don't know about you, but my God don't make no junk. So when he orchestrated me, he orchestrated me perfect in his image and in his likeness. Oh, you better give yourself some glory because it is God that has made you. It is God that has created you. And like I said, my God don't make no junk. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, so a house not made with hands. This is not a dish creation, but this is the perfect tabernacle, not made with the hands of man. This is this is when Jesus Christ come back and we go back to be with him in the glorified body. Oh, come on, somebody. Want to be glorified? That means that you're going to be perfect in heaven? Because there's no flaws in heaven. I need somebody to help me today. I need somebody to help me today. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Because he watched it. Because the corruptible shall put on incorruption, and the mortal shall put on immortality. And don't you know death is swallowed up in victory? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we're getting ready to go. So I just come to encourage the family today. Let not your heart be troubled. But if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are uh, many mansions. If it was not so, uh, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go... Uh, I will come to receive you unto myself. Uh, what I need the family to know this evening uh, is hold on uh, to God's unchanging hand. Uh, but to hold on to his hand, uh, you got to become part of God's family. Uh, hold on, family, uh, and just take a chance on the Lord. Uh, the 
Bible says in journals in heaven, uh, and Sister Abby, she has already lived her life. Uh, now when she's gone on the glory, uh, there's no more sickness. Uh, there's no more pain. Uh, there's no more death. Uh, I need somebody here today. Uh, you know that God is able. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad that he's able. Uh, when I'm down and out, uh, it is God that lifts me up. Uh, when I'm sick and I'm sad, uh, it's God that heals me. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, receive this home is accept Jesus Christ Lord as our Savior because everything that we go through right now this is only temporary on this side all these fancy cars and these homes that we have it's not the wrong way but let me tell you something don't put them ahead of God come on somebody because I don't know about you but my Bible has said we, have, we serve a jealous God and you should not put nothing ahead of God but the main thing that I'm trying to tell this family today is that you've got to put your trust in the Lord. Yes, and he will bring you through this midnight storm. Because, because watch this, because, listen, listen, listen. Listen, Sister Abbott, oh, hallelujah. She don't have to worry about this old world no more. She don't have to turn on the TV and see all the stuff that's going on. Oh, come on, somebody. Because now she is going home with the Lord. And if you want the opportunity to go home to be with the Lord, you've got to get your business right. What better time than right now? While the family is gathered together, continue to show love one another. I, I love the sister, Sister Kim, that came out when she, she said she loved to make people laugh. I understand, and I do the same thing. Listen, don't you don't you know that is healing and laughter? Because sometimes you just feel like crying, but when you can laugh, oh, hallelujah. But see, but when you got the glory of God inside of you, he will bring peace in everything that you need. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the enemy wants to try to destroy you. He wants to try to keep you down. But it is God. Glory be to God. Oh, come on, somebody. All he has to do is just touch. And all he has to do is speak. But, but on your part, you got to make him part of you. You got to get into the family of God. You got to make God your Lord, first of all. Once you make him your Lord, he's your owner, and he's your boss, he's your all in all, he's your everything. And then he saves you. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I challenge this family. Continue to stay with God, and God will stay with you. We're going to have Reverend Brown coming this time, and he's going to get the invitation. The church say amen. amen. We don't take for granted that everyone here is saved. We said that once, we've said that twice, and we'll continue to save it because... It is our job and our duty as children of God to introduce you to your Father. And I would ask humbly that if you know, you know assuredly that you do not have a relationship with Jesus, we can rectify that right now. We have come here to celebrate the life of Sister Abbott. She has done all that she can do. Now it's time for you to take care of your business. Yes, Lord. When we celebrate our lives, the one thing I want to say about me is that I knew God. Yeah. Not that I was a nice person, not even that I was a good father, but I was a child of God. And the rest will take care of itself. If you are not in a relationship with Christ today, I implore you, allow us to lead you down that path. If, if there's one, if there's just one, the invitation is being made. And understand it is not actually an invitation. You invite friends out to dinner. Yeah. You invite family over to eat. God is calling his people home. Yes, yes. A building not made with man's hands. That's a home. Yes. He's calling you home. Is there one today? Amen. God's grace, peace, and love to this family. Amen. Amen.
family. We're going to ask Reverend Talbot if he would pray for the family at this time. Pray with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy high and holy name. Father, by your grace and mercy, we have assembled in this place to celebrate the life of Sister Abbott. Her body has gone back to the ground, but we know her spirit rests with you. And Father, we are so thankful for you and for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and for your blessed promises for us. If we will look to you, as our Lord and our Savior. We call on you, Father, for your grace and your mercy and ask you to bless this family. You made us the way we are, so when we lose loved ones, we hurt and we grieve. But we know, Father, that you are a good Father, that you never put on us more than we can stand. So we thank you so much for, for, for allowing us to grieve and to cry. But not only that, Father, we pray that we'll be keep in memory Sister Abbott and all the things she was to each of those that are here. Some good, some good. Amen. Amen. We want to give uh, Brother Sister William that they would like to have opportunity to say something to the family before we dismiss. Would you guys like to say anything? To clear, we continue to be in prayer. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, one thing that we, we need to do is continue to support the family, not only today, but listen, guys, support each other every day. Because because one problem we always seem to have, and to include my family as well, is, is we, we get together on occasions like this, and, and it lasts for about a week or so, and then we seem to forget. But listen, Jesus is coming back. And so let's stay connected together. Let's stay connected to God first. And then let's stay connected to our families. Because family is so, so important. Because there may be a point in time where you may be sitting here in this same position. So continue to love each other. Sister Kim, keep them laughing. Keep them laughing. Keep them laughing. What a girl heavy rolling, boy. She just said, well, you forgot something. You forgot my man. I can just see that, boy. <laughs> and she's probably like, oh, really? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> laughter is good. Laughter is good. Listen, we're, we're gonna we're gonna dismiss and we're going to bless the food and we're gonna go and, and, and celebrate this family and let them and let them um, continue to celebrate with each other. Amen. Amen. Reverend Barnes, if you would come and bless the food and then we're gonna go back and um, now, now 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 I smell some I smell some chicken when I first came in. Y'all know preachers and chicken. <laughs> I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't gonna tell I ain't gonna tell you who gave me a piece before we even got back here. But if you if you if you whistle, I point at him. <laughs> he took care of his pastor. I said I said I said Red, that chicken store smelled good. That's like I know. Well, you come to high step, boy. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you the other preachers ain't something too. But anyway. <laughs> You know, sometimes when you do something, you got to be able to handle it. And I like to say that they on that chicken deal. I know I've been placed in and frying chicken that smell good and offered me damn peace. My teeth were rattling and shaking. I said, I'm not going to put that on another person. I said, there's some chicken around. If I can get him a piece, I'm going to give him a piece of chicken because I don't want that to happen to nobody else. Amen. It's, it's wonderful to have fun. And it's wonderful to enjoy life. And it's amazing that we'll live all our life and never take time out to enjoy it. And it's right there with Jesus. It's right there with him. Let us bless the food, let us bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, right now in your name, bless the meal we've already received, let it be nourishment for all bodies, oh dear God, and give us strength and 
to do your will and keep on keeping on with that God yeah. and strengthen us day and night. We feel God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to ask if we would let the family go back first. Back to my left. Um, they are already ready. Okay. Uh, the culinary committee, they are already ready. So, the family, if y'all would please let the family go first and get fed, and then um, uh, the rest of us, then we will be fine. You are dismissed. We'll, we'll continue to pray for you. Amen.
He's not allowed to break out of the tab. He's in school. And then what?